Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at anti-satellite weapons and sort of some of the challenges you're probably going to face in trying to employ them. Uh, we definitely have some things that are probably bug worthy as far as these goes, but it's quite a bit involved here and we'll kind of go ahead and get started. So first things first, uh, how do you shoot down a satellite? Well, before we look at how to shoot down a satellite, there's a couple things you have to understand about satellites. Uh, the first thing is if I click on a satellite, land like we have this one right down here, you're going to get a lot of interesting information, not the least of which you're going to get its future path that we can go ahead and take the shot at. Now, if we're going to be taking a shot at this, as you probably observe, I position myself so I'll be right in the way. So this will be a pretty easy shot for us. Now, if you were doing something where you were trying to take a shot over here, keep in mind these distances are, let's see here, 1300 nautical miles. So the satellites travel an incredibly long distance. So it's uh, worthwhile to note that the scale of shooting at satellites is very different than the scale of shooting at airplanes. And a lot of people don't realize that. Uh, one of the really, really nice things that we have at our disposal is if you actually go somewhere, there's a satellite pass predictions option. If I click on this, what it'll actually do is give you a finger. You can go ahead and click something on the ground and it will actually calculate when the next satellite will come close to it. And it'll also give you the dwell time, which is basically how long it's gonna be visible in the sky and you can see very very uh, carefully our two satellites in the scenario you can see where they're going to be you can also recalculate this like i said it was a very quick calculation because i know that these two satellites are supposed to get really really close because i put them there so i'd be able to take the shot Another thing you need to know about satellites is their altitude. As you probably noticed in my little opening uh, sequence here, I know exactly what you're thinking. <laughs> I'm just not going to say it. Um, if you take a look at the satellite and I zoom out a little bit, Notice how high off the ground the satellite is. Uh, keep in mind, all of our operations in command basically take place where my finger is. This guy is up here. He's just an order of magnitude higher. As a matter of fact, he's at 416 kilometers upwards. Now, the reason why this is going to be really, 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 really important to us is because uh, whenever you have altitude, that also means it takes more time. And then finally, and this is a really important point of order here, is the fact that the satellite's traveling at 14,863 knots. Remember, as the satellite gets higher off the ground, the satellite is going to be moving relative to the Earth slower. I know that sounds weird, but remember, they take about the same amount of time to go around the world, which means if I'm way up here, it's going to take me a slower than it's going to take me if I'm way down here. It's just a, kind of one of those nice little quirks that you kind of have to keep in the back of your head when you're dealing with satellites, that ironically, as they get higher, they almost become a simpler shot. But again, no matter what, they're going to be traveling, you know, Mach 40 or Mach 50 or something like that. No, I'm sorry, um, Mach 14, that's like, I think they're 24,000 miles an hour. Ah, you can do the math quicker than I can on that one. So let's go ahead and take a look now at what we can use to shoot them down. Uh, the first thing is everybody's favorite choice here is using an airplane. Um, the air one plane that they have simulated, there's actually a few airplanes throughout history that supposedly have had these weapons, but this is the most common one. And that's the F-15A ASAT, which carries this thing called an ASM-135, which is this big honking honking thing. Let me show it to you. Which was used to shoot down satellites. As you can see, it looks a little derpy because it was a little derpy. Um, what this one particularly will do is it's launched off the bottom of this aircraft upwards so unfortunately and um all everything that they were trying to achieve as far as you know putting all those brand new radar features in they broke this aircraft so what i'm going to do is i'm going to order him to proceed in the direction of our enemy satellite here I'll go ahead and speed up time a little bit and let me show you the problem here so uh, we're going ahead and flying. I'm actually going to tweak my uh, positioning just a little bit here so I have a pretty clean shot on it. So now you probably notice my aircraft here. I'll go ahead and speed up time. I love how fast this thing travels. We notice that we're about 36,000 feet, and we notice that the satellite itself up there is about, like I said, um, what do we have here? 416 kilometers. So when we fire, we have to basically shoot vertically. If I wanted this aircraft to take the shot on this one right now, I'll just press shift F1 and go ahead and click on our satellite here. Of course, so when you do that, you declare war. Uh, one of the problems we're going to have is we're out of the DLC range. That's fine. So let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit here. I can almost, almost, almost hear a few bars of uh, James Bond as we come here. And he's not going to take the shot. You're sitting there going, but but he knows how to take that shot. That's not that big a deal. Well, not exactly. You'll notice we cannot take the shot no matter what. So you see that we are outside of the vertical bore site limit. Check observer altitude and pitch. So it's like, oh, okay, fine. Then we'll just have the, the F-15 travel upwards. Okay, cool. So we'll set to max altitude. We'll go ahead and flip on the afterburner switch there. We'll also back him up just a teeny tiny bit here. So now our aircraft is going to go ahead and pitch up. So he's pitched up to about 20 degrees there. So he's uh, pointing up pretty darn steep. Uh, he's also traveling at really, 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 really high speed. And you can see we're basically pointing, just like you saw in that little picture a minute ago, if you actually watch the picture. Uh, you'll see how steep of an angle he was flying at the time when he actually fired the weapon. <laughs> Quite an angle. So we'll take the shot again. 
And you'll notice we are unable to. No matter what, we'll never be able to take this shot because the satellite is just too darn high. Now, here's the joke, though. The weapon can theoretically shoot down that satellite. The problem is our F-15 buddy doesn't have a radar that can look up high enough to take the shot anymore. Uh, that's, again, something that was... I think that's a bug. I don't think that was intentional. So let's fix it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up to sensors real quick. We're going to add something that can actually do the deed here. Let's do an APG-77, I think is the one I want. Double output power. Ooh, I like that. Uh, which one do we want? We'll go with the V1 here. I'll go ahead and flip it on to detection. Remember, he needs to detect the target before he's able to take the shot on the target, even though the weapon doesn't really care. All right, looks good, looks good, looks good. Add selected. Let's go ahead and flip everything under the sun on, and that should now give him this woo kind of a thing like that, meaning he now has a radar because it's an A, so he can look up with it. So let's go ahead and move him back just a teeny tiny bit. It's going to get close. Go ahead and lock onto that sucker. Go ahead and take the shot. Take the shot, man. Take the shot. Oh, I don't think we're going to be able to take this shot. Keep pitching upwards. And he has to probably get just a little bit higher. Again, 20 degrees. This is going to be a very tight window here. So he's pitching up as high as he can. He's got that nice, sophisticated radar. He's looking right at that target as it's going to sail over. And of course, he's going to take the shot and everything's going to be too late. So let me go ahead and cancel those other two shots. And take the shot. He's not going to be able to. Back him up a little bit, see if at any point he's going to get the magic position, which gives him the ability to take it. I don't think it's going to happen. Bummer. So as you can see, unfortunately, because of the new radar modeling, we're never able to get to a point where we can actually safely actually do the deed here. Now, of course, in a luckier world, he'd just pitch up to his thing at 45, 50, 60 degrees and be able to take that shot every day of the week. But you'll notice we're no longer able to actually safely engage that particular target. So he's going to get away. My poor little F-15A is just going to sit there watching sail by. So what about ground-based options? Well, there are some ground-based options that can help us out here. So let's swing back over to the USA, including this uh, handy-dandy new system called the SC-19. Now, this is a Chinese, it's basically an HQ-9 derivative. So let's try it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see here. Uh, there's our satellite, shift F1, click, double click, double click, and we'll go ahead and speed up time here. And we'll see what happens this time. Actually, I can probably grab that F-15. You know, you were a wonderful help. Please return to base. Okay. He's probably pretty sad after all that. So now this weapon system has a really, really long range. I mean, I think we have a range in the order of, whoop, and it already took the shot. Ah, busted. it. Did we, though? Now notice those shots that went right up, uh, came up to where the target was, and didn't seem to do much of anything. Uh, the reason for that is, of course, because the missile cannot travel fast enough to engage the target. If you actually come down here and take a look, you'll notice that we have a 70% chance to hit. However, because the target is 1,500 knots, and our back's weapon speed is 10,000 knots, we have a 0% chance we'll never, ever, ever, ever hit that satellite. So you're going, ah, oh, this is why you had to make a video of this, because there's a lot of complications. Yeah, well, the good news is there actually is a way to shoot down a satellite. And I'm not talking uh, just clicking on and pressing delete either. It's actually a much more fun way. Let's go over to the United States for a second here. Um, down here, we have this thing called the SBX. Uh, this is a C-based X-band radar. This is a pretty slick thing. It's a giant oil rig with a satellite sitting on the nose, and it's basically an ABM. It was linked to the GMD, which is pretty fun. That's a lot of EIAOs. But the weapon we're going to use today to actually succeed at shooting down a satellite is none other than the SM-6. So I'm going to go ahead and now hit play here, and we're going to go ahead and acquire this satellite I'm floating up here. Apparently, it's a slightly different satellite from the other one. I swear those movies just use the same plot over and over again, but I'm, I'm not going to notice. I'm not going to notice. So I'm going to go ahead and press uh, Shift F1, go ahead and click on this guy. And now notice, I have two different weapons I could throw at these. These are SM3s. These aren't even SM6s. So I'm going to grab this one right here. This is a block 2A, another eight seconds before I can take the shot. Um, we're going to launch six, because each one of these is probably going to have about a 20% chance. And yes, I know that's not how statistics work, but um, don't worry about it too much. So we now launch the missiles. You're sitting there going, are you kidding me? That missile, it, you're, the max range is over here. How on earth are you supposed to hit something that's over there? Well, remember, these missiles have to travel upwards in order to reach the target. If I actually go to 3D view real quickly here, <laughs> look at that. Oh, I don't want the F-15. I want the much more fun stuff. Stuff over here. Boop. So remember, this thing has to go all the way up. <laughs> so we're traveling at about Mach 14 here. Just choo-chooing. Uh, we're at an altitude of... Uh, actually, the one I had clicked a second ago. This one right there. There we go. Uh, we're up to Mach 16 with this missile right now. And uh, we're getting up pretty high. Uh, we're pitched up at about a 45-degree angle, trying to desperately claw our ways up in order to take a crack at this thing. Look at how high up this satellite is. 
Uh, that's uh, 676 kilometers. And again, this is what makes these things so obnoxiously difficult to shoot down is because everything is just at a totally different speed and a totally different scale. Now notice these guys are just kind of climbing away. Our little satellites are kind of chilling. It's coming over our northern Canada here. Man, I wish I could fly that fast. <laughs> That'd be pretty sweet. Missiles are on the way up. I'll go ahead and grab one of them. And you can see they're still climbing. They haven't even finished their initial climb out at this point. And now they're starting to get a little bit closer. And again, their final engagement time is coming pretty soon. We have to hope hope against hope here that we manage to climb enough altitude to actually be able to make the intercept here. Continue to climb, continue to climb. Oh, it's going to be close. Oh, man, look at this shot. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now, that was a shot. Notice how early we had to fire, by the way, in order to get these things remotely up to this altitude. So here we go. Go SM3. Go SM3, not SM6. I think one of the SM6s. Oh, there it is. So who needs, uh, you know, super secret agents uh, when you can just pop them with missiles, kind of a thing like that. Now, that works great. I'm actually kind of impressed. Obviously, if you put some deflection on that, that probably wouldn't have worked so well. But here's what we want to show a quick a little demonstration of um, where people really, really struggle with ASATs here. So I'm going to speed up time. Okay, stop. So now our satellite's halfway across the United States. So let's take that exact same shot. And I want to just show you so the kind of the last little oopsie, oopsie, oopsies that uh, is going to occur here that, like I said, typically throws people off. So we fired our weapons. Uh, they start climbing. They start climbing. You're in this 2D view here. You're watching it. You're like, oh, man, this is sweet. Look at this. Ah, no problem. Those missiles are going to connect. No problem. And pause. <laughs> Now, you're sitting there going, oh yeah, that was a good shot, man. Why did, why did you shoot that last one so early? Well, let me show you why. As I stated, this satellite is 675 kilometers upwards. So if I were to actually go ahead and uh, grab that satellite, come on, you'll probably observe the fact that our satellite uh, is just out of reach of the R3s, the uh, SM3s. So if you actually look at the intercepts here, the first three that we fired sailed right past it because they didn't build up enough altitude on the way up. These two on the flip side, I'm actually kind of surprised. I didn't realize they were going to get that close. That was a good shot on my part. Not even close. So you can see those missiles basically ran out of time to get up to the altitude to actually strike that satellite. So our satellite here is going to keep going around and threatening the world until, you know, somebody can stop the counter at seven seconds or something like that. So it's important to kind of know that that's why this is so challenging to do. You've got a combination of bugs. You have a combination of really high speeds. And of course, you have a combination of having extremely narrow launch windows. But you can see it's still possible, or at least until somebody puts Star Wars into the system, you know, the ASAT from back in the 80s, but you know how it is. Other than that, enjoy.